and welcome to Blow the Whistle, your Friday lowdown on all the sports happening in and around the North West. I'm Evie. And I'm Max and welcome back to the show. Remember to keep up to date with the conversation by following us on social media at blowthewhistle.us. We use social media each week to hear from you, so remember to drop us a follow. Coming up on today's show, we'll have the latest on the World Cups, World Cup, England's chances, rugby news and all of Salford University sports. Right, let's get started with the World Cup. It's been a busy few days of knockout football. Evie, looking very festive with the Christmas jumper. So are you, Matt? you got the red memo yeah, early. And well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Forest as well. I could Forest? Do with, yeah, to be fair, I could do with an England jumper. Um, really could, yeah. I did see that there was some Southgate-esque like, waistcoat Christmas yeah. jumpers. I could have picked up one of those, to be fair. Um, it's been a busy few weeks in, in World Cup with the yeah. knockout football. A few upsets. Spain, of course, going out, losing on penalties. What did you make of that? It was... Them obviously yeah. leaving the competition, th well, at this stage mm. was a surprise. But again, also not this is the three, three times in a row mm. that they've gone out on Lost penalties. On penalties yeah. Like, yeah, mad. And then, and then especially you kind of look at kind of England's chances now. People say, well, maybe England have got a bit more of a chance. There's a few kind of upsets, and of course we've got France, which isn't going to yeah. be an easy test, you know, at all. It's going to be a, a very difficult game. You've got players like Kylian Mbappe. Although people are saying Kyle Walker will have him in his back pocket, but I'm not too sure about that. Do you think England will go all the way, Evie? Before the last two weeks, I was going to say no. I didn't mm. think I said France all along. But I think um, I think France should be a bit a bit fearful of us. Mm. It's not just us who should be fearful of France. I think England do have a chance, and especially, yeah, Sunday game. The beginning, we weren't strong. Mm. But as soon as we got that goal, you, you can yeah. see the confidence. And I think they just need to believe in themselves because then they're playing great. And we've just got to be that from the first minute to mm. the 90th minute. We've got to be positive, we've got to be positive. Yeah. But there's other teams, isn't there? I suppose we kind of talked on the polls the other week about Brazil and, and, and teams mm. like that. Do you still think that Brazil are, are kind of going to win it? Because I can't remember what your prediction was. I actually said France. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> kind of regretting that now, yeah. but I do, I think Brazil will got a chance, but I honestly believe that the winners overall, well, depending on Saturday's um, mm. outcome, but will, will be either England or France. You think? What about you? Yeah. So that game is going to be crucial. That I, game's think going to, I, I don't know. Brazil, pro probably. I, you know, I was going to say Argentina, mm. but may, maybe not now. So, 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 so probably going, probably sticking for Brazil. Um, fingers crossed. But it, again, it's a, it's one of those where it, it's kind of hard to predict and see because you've got completely, you know, you've got teams that are completely either. Newly found, you've got new managers at the helm yeah. thi this year in the World Cup, and I think that's why we've seen so many upsets so far, um, yeah, and everything I, like that. I definitely think this World Cup has not been predictable. Nothing has gone. No. As it you maybe th would think, yeah. but I'm excited for Saturday's game. I think it's going to be a big game, and I think not to undermine who we've played already, mm. but this is the first one where it's both big teams. Mm. Obviously, France has had a brilliant history, but. I think England, we do have a, a solid chance, and especially over the past um, few games. Like mm. How have you thought they've been playing? Yeah, no, they've played well, to be fair, and hopefully every underdog has the day. So maybe England are a bit of an underdog in the competition this year. Mm. Who knows? Now, after a disappointing uh, Autumn Nation series, England's head coach, Eddie Jones, has been sacked after eight years in the job. Our reporter, Leo, joins us now. Leo, welcome to the show. That was a Hello. swift entrance. I know, yeah. Very or, almost like magic. <laughs> almost like magic. Um, the magic of TV. It's exactly. been a busy few weeks. Good to see you again. Has, yes, you are back you. on Good the sofa, as always. You seem to be a you seem to be a regular guest. Yeah, talk yeah. to us about what the latest. Talk, talk to us about the latest yeah. um, England rugby news because it's been a big week with Eddie Jones being sacked. It has, as you say, Eddie Jones has just been sacked, the head coach of, of England rugby team. He's been in the job since 2015, so a long, long time. He's had a long tenure, but after a disappointing autumn national series where England didn't look didn't look brilliant. I mean, the opening game they lost to uh, to Argentina, which was a shock defeat. England should be beaten sides like that. Um, <clears throat> They had a draw against New Zealand, won a couple more games, but still it wasn't it wasn't a confident display from England. So yes, as you say, he's lost the job. <clears throat> I mean, do you think it was the correct decision? Um it's 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 debatable. I think maybe. Obviously there's a World Cup next year, twenty twenty three in Japan next winter. It's the rugby World Cup, which is massive for England. England have to be doing well <coughs> in that competition. Um so 
possibly yet it's good that they have sacked him that they've sacked him this early so they've got mm. plenty of time to look for someone new I wouldn't want them to be sacking the manager two or three weeks before the competition um, a lot of names are in the hat I don't know who is going to be the the replacement yet but it's certainly given England a lot of time to plan for a new manager mm. well I saw that um England currently actually have had the best um, like win percentage with the rugby with this manager. So, did this come as a shock to you? Definitely, you know Eddie Jones is a legendary manager for England. The stuff that he's done, the awards and trophies that he's won, is parallel to none. Mm. You know he's been a phenomenal manager, and as you say, England have a fantastic win record with Eddie Jones as manager. <clears throat> I think you know. Sir Alex Ferguson, he lost his job at the end. Um, all, my, all great managers do lose their jobs. Ed, Eddie Jones, that was just his time. It's unfortunate that he's been sacked in the way that he has. Um, I think it's, you know, in my opinion, it's quite disrespectful towards him to, for all of the good work that he's done so far. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it was definitely time to go. Yeah, definitely. Leo, thanks very much. No worries. Much, no and worries. have a very good Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. you have both a good Christmas. And next you. time, Wear a Christmas jumper. Oh, I know, I'll try, I'll try. <laughs> All right, nice one. Well, following on from the rugby, women's rugby is beginning to gain the same following that men's team does. Abby Titmus went along to Broughton Rugby Club to find out about their new women's team. The number of women playing rugby has risen from 25,000 to 40,000 in the last five years, according to Sport England. The Rugby Football Union has set its sights on growing this number to 100,000 in the coming five years. Broughton Rugby Club is one of the many clubs around the country trying to encourage more women to get involved with the sport and it is working with other clubs in the area to help get players game experience and tackling the obstacles that might hold women back from being involved in contact sport. The Red Roses have been going years. But I think only the only past the last two years, I'd say grassroots rugby, women's rugby has only just sort of kicked off. Possibly because it is a very aggressive sport. Don't get me wrong, you know, we're not 10 bells out of each other and we go for a pint afterwards. That's a good respect about rugby, that's why we like it. But I think, you know, women like getting their hair done, they like getting their nails done, they don't like getting them dirty the day after. But in fairness, in the minute, and statistically is the quickest growing sport. The club has had a men's team for many years and previously tried to set up a women's team. However, it wasn't yeah. successful, but they are hoping this year will give women in Salford a chance to get involved in the sport. Some of the women who attended the first session on Friday are also part of the Sedgley Tigers team and are fully aware of the benefits of the sport. My mental health has gone a lot better since um, I suffer quite badly with uh, anxiety and depression um, and that's what got me into rugby. Um, I was in a really dark place and then I saw a post of a local rugby ladies team and I thought I'll give it a go um, and then ever since it's, it's released a lot of any bad energy I've got, um, fitness wise, is 10 times better than it was before as well. As well as some who are new to the sport but wanted to try it out. I'm actually from the town of Rugby, so I thought, oh, I need to give it a go now. <laughs> and it's been really, really, really fun, like meeting new people and just doing something new. So I've really enjoyed it. Friday nights here at Broughton Rugby Club have now become home to the Valkyries. The women's team started tonight and had their first session. They have plans to team up with another club to make sure their players can get enough games. The recent success of the Red Roses is putting a spotlight on women's rugby and with grassroots clubs like this one hoping to get more people involved, the future is certainly looking good. Thank you for that, Abby. Here at Blow the Whistle, we want to know what you're thinking on the world of sport. And the best way to do that is, of course, by following us on Instagram at blowthewhistle.us. Yeah, on Instagram, we put out a series of polls to get your thoughts on some of the topics that we have discussed so far on the show. And here they are now, so... Let's have a look. So, England versus France, who will win? 57% said England and 43 saying France. What are you thinking about that, Max? Yeah, the confidence and the, and the positivity is rubbing off. We talked about the last time we did the polls about being people being positive. Very interesting, Evie. You mentioned when we were just talking on the sofa there about mm. people kind of fearing uh, France, but possibly not. You know, England have a have a young squad, have a confident squad. You know, have kept clean sheets throughout this tournament, really, kind of bar the odd game. So, look, I, I, I honestly think we have a better chance than ever. Um, and, you know, 
people will say, well, we haven't had an, an easy running. We had an easy running last time, but um, you know, I think this time maybe facing the tougher teams to start off with is is probably for the better. Yeah, should we have a look at the next yes. one then? If we can get the next one. <laughs> <laughs> so, should Eddie Jones have been sacked? Seventy percent saying yes. That's quite a big number. Yeah, it's quite a big number, and thirty and thirty percent saying no. So. As we talked with Leo, really, it was kind of a shock decision, I think, to many. There was the, the, there's been rumours for a few weeks that he was going to leave, um, and interesting to see also in rugby, possibly the same in football. What will happen with Gareth Southgate? You know, his contract isn't far from being up, so will he leave after the World Cup, whatever happens, or will he stay? Who knows? We'll have to see. It'll be an interesting one. Do you think it was the right decision, Evie? Um, I'm going to go with yeah. I just think always nice for a fresh team mm. and I think especially I think maybe the pressure was on with the um, competition mm. coming up so, so soon I know it's next year but yeah. and I think maybe people need that change yeah, that fresh definitely. that fresh start definitely so let's look at the other so do we think the basketball team can win the league and this is uni sports and 67% said yes what about what are you thinking Max? yeah I mean I've, I've seen a few games to be fair from the basketball team and and they've always been quite positive you know they've got a good set of players I think also with kind of uni sports is it's got that kind of environment where it isn't too kind of pressured in, in kind of normal sports so there's always kind of a bit of enjoyment I always think with sport if you can enjoy it while you're playing often players are going to do well often mm. the team or the club who, who kind of it, ever you play for will always strive to success and we'll have more with Sam on that in a moment as well yeah, I think, like you said, with that pressure, there isn't that pressure. It's yeah. more of the fun, and I think yeah. you do see in all sports, really, like people thrive off mm, that. I think definitely. currently in the World Cup with um, Bellingham, mm. I think being so young, he doesn't really have that pressure. He knows he's good. We all know he's good, but yeah. he doesn't have that weight on his shoulders. Exactly, no, so. you're right, spot on. Right. So it no. has now been a busy week in uni sports with Salford's football, rugby, basketball, and netball team all in action. Our reporter Sam joins us now. Sam, good to see you, mate. Yeah, good to see you too. I mean, I'm no longer part of the backroom staff. <laughs> no here, longer part of the backroom staff, yeah, as we mentioned I'm the other week. Finally on the couch, I guess. Yes. And yeah, it's been a very busy week in uni sports. I mean, it's been the final week before the break for Christmas. Obviously, I said last week it was getting ramping up towards the end of the semester. Teams were starting to um, get get their kind of form going but mm. one team some teams that haven't been able to get their form going so far has been the football teams mm. um the first team in particular they lost yet again yesterday against top of the league man met so a bit of a bit of a tough game they sit second bottom um mm. of in the in their league in division two which is obviously a very tough division very high up they um are ahead of uclan who they beat uh, at the start of the season so a very good start to the season for sulfur but the first team it's starting to uh, go down a little bit and it's the same can be said for the second team mm -hmm. uh, the second team have only drawn once this season they've lost five games they lost six nil um, I think it was yesterday and uh, yeah they're six points off of Kiel in fifth in their league so relegation might be on the cards for them unfortunately it's a good thing that the third team mm. are there to kind of pick up the slack you could potentially say with the first and second team they sit fourth but they've only played three games <coughs> um, you know they've picked up two wins in those three games and with games in hand they could they could jump to about a about like a point off of first so the third team a little bit a little bit to look forward to after uh, after Christmas obviously with a lot of games to play that might help them it might hinder them you know with the the fitness uh, fatigue coming in um, who knows but yeah I mean the positive look in for the for the third team um, but I think football's kind of where it almost ends in terms of like the mediocrity when yeah. it comes to uni sport sports you were talking about the uh, the basketball yeah team the basketball there. yeah they won yet again very close game uh, 80 points to 78 they beat Leeds Beckett yesterday at the Salford Sports Centre very very interesting game so Salford kind of race out to a very commanding lead but they got pegged back it was almost like a bit of complacency struck in they were playing bottom of the league um, and in the end you know they had to they had to fight from behind um, going into the fourth quarter I think they were down like three going into the final quarter so a very tough game very tight game overall ultimately Salford winning puts them um, puts them second still in the league behind Liverpool John Moores who they play twice after Christmas. Yeah. Do you think the Christmas break has come at the wrong period Sam for a lot of teams because sometimes you and you see this in professional sports as well in professional for, for example football is that sometimes the Christmas break can come too early kind of teams build momentum build confidence and that they don't really need that Christmas break they want to keep going. No I think the opposite is true for the uh, for the basketball team I feel they were on a roll they were unbeaten they'd won four straight league games they won two straight games in the cup 
and then last week's game against mm. Man Met where they got absolutely blown out they weren't up to the races you could probably say the same for the game yesterday they weren't up to it the um, they only beat bottom of the league uh, Leeds Beckett who haven't won yet this season um, so they only beat them by two points so maybe it was a case of um, you know they, they need to they, they need this break to kind of mm. like refresh and uh, maybe push on to a title charge in the second half of the season. Yeah, and you're going to keep us updated next year when we come back and you hopefully, can have hopefully. And I mean, let's let's be honest. We talked about football. We talked about basketball. There, a lot of stuff going on in rugby and netball as well. The netball team's doing really well. Um, the rugby teams, the rugby league teams, doing well. The union side's not so much. But I mean, if there's any um, if there's any more sports around mm. the un around the union of Salford that are listening in that want to be featured on a uni sports with myself, then. Yep. They should get in touch with uh, through the Instagram. Sam is your man for that. Thank you very much, Sam. Have a Thank good you. Christmas, mate. Me too. Thank Thank you. You. Right, thanks. And as Sam just said, if there's any other university sports you want to hear about on our show, make sure to let us know on our Instagram at blowthewhistle.us. And that's all we have time for today. We will be back in the new year to keep you updated on all the Northwest sports. Have a Merry Christmas. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching this year.